Today we are making sakshuka, a super tasty recipe with eggs from Northern Africa. Enjoy! Well, it's a quick and easy recipe actually. It takes relatively short time to cook it and there is only a little bit of prep work. So we start out with some onion. So chop them relatively fine into a bowl with all of our onion. And then we continue with a couple of cloves of garlic, I would say. They still have some paper on here, so the easiest thing is to give them a punch like this. We're going to give this, let's say, a fine mince. Just run your knife through them a couple of times. Obviously, you can add as much garlic as you want here. I went with three cloves. Maybe I should have given a little bit more. I don't know. What do you say? You want I more? I think it's already a lot. You think? Yeah. Okay. But actually, that's how they do it also in Morocco and Tunisia, where I've tried it before, and it is quite garlicky and spicy. So. Well, that's not bad. I like garlic, so. No, no, it's a great recipe, actually. A little bit, a little bowl here. And then we continue with a little bit of parsley. I don't want the stems, so off with those. But it doesn't matter that you leave them here in the, in the tubs because they do give a lot of flavor and we are going to cook it. So don't bother to separate the leaves one by one. It's not worth it. And again, run your knife through this. That looks good. With that out of the way, the last part is our peppers. We are using red bell peppers today. You could use uh, red jalapenos, you could use Holland peppers, uh, whatever you prefer, depending how spicy you want it to be. So get that core out of there with all the seeds. We don't want those. A little bit is okay. But a little bit trick when you cut peppers, and it might seem like stupid, but cut it skin side up because if your knife is not really, really sharp, then it sticks together if you put the skin down towards the board. So skin side up, and we're going to give this like a dice, relatively small dices, because we want this to cook into a nice soft sauce. And into a bowl, and I'm thinking today we need all three bell peppers, I would say. That's all, now we're ready to cook. So it's pretty simple. We have a large pan or pot we are using a rondo pot here, but you can use a pan as long as you have a lid. That's important. We're going to add quite a healthy glug of olive oil. We want oil in the sauce and a little bit of olive oil never harmed anybody. You want to have the whole bottom covered, so I guess this is maybe five tablespoons, something like that. Maybe even more. And then we start this up on medium low, and then we put in our onion cold like this, and at the same time our peppers, because we want them to cook and get sweet and get soft. So onions and peppers, they go at the same time into the cold pan, and we let them start to soften and simmer slightly. Don't do this on too high heat, because you don't want them to brown. You want them to become translucent and soft and sweet. This will take probably 10 to 12 minutes. Nice and soft. Onions are translucent, so then we create a bit of space here in the middle, and we're going to go in with our garlic, just to make it fragrant, like that. Let that go the usual 20-30 seconds, till you start smelling them. I start smelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can smell them from far away. Yeah, they're just about there, so mm, mix yeah. that in. Oh, it smells good already. Mm. It's a nice recipe, this one. Very fragrant, actually. That's mixed in. Then let's go in with our tomatoes. I have two and a half kilo of canned tomatoes here, but we actually strained them a little bit from the beginning. We don't want too much tomato water in this. So we strained out maybe, I don't know, half a kilo of water, 400 ml. In with that. And mix it all well. 
while this warms up, we are going to go in with our spices. I have a whole lineup here in front. First up, we are going in with some red chili flakes. You could use cayenne pepper, whatever. This is about half a tablespoon of uh, red chili flakes. Then we have a tablespoon of ground cumin. And then we have a tablespoon of sumac. That's probably not traditional Moroccan, but it gives a very nice uh, Middle Eastern flavor to this. And they also make similar dishes in the, in the Middle East. A good pinch of uh, freshly cracked black pepper. And a good pinch of sea salt. We will taste it for salt, but let's give it two pinches for now. It's uh, quite big. And last but not least, a tablespoon of uh, paprika. Since I'm only using half a tablespoon of uh, chili peppers, I'm going in with the spicy paprika here because we want to have a little bit of kick in this. And get that all mixed in. Basically, what we want to do now is we want to let this go and cook until we have the right consistency of the sauce. We want it to thicken up quite a bit and I'll show you why we need the sauce to be thick. So let this go probably another 10, maybe 15 minutes so we have a nice, really chunky, thick sauce. We are almost there and look how thick it's becoming. It needs a little bit more because we want to be able to create like little indentations for the eggs, but needs a couple more minutes. But before that, I'm going to add our parsley so that cooks. I don't want to add it from the beginning because then it overcooks and that's not nice. And actually, I want to talk a little bit about the pot because, as I told you from the beginning, I was going in with a stainless steel pot. Many of these recipes you see on YouTube and whatever, they use cast iron. But you have to be careful with that because tomatoes, they are acidic. And then when you cook for this long time with tomato in cast iron, you get a metallic flavor to your sauce. So you don't want to do that. You want a non-reactive pot um, either like this, or you could even oven cook it in a clay pot if you, uh, if you wanted to. In a tangin? In a tangin, yeah. That's yeah. a lot used in yeah, Northern true. Africa. That you could do. We want to let this go maybe four or five minutes more before we continue with our eggs. Here we are. The sauce is nice and thick, so now we can continue with our eggs. I've turned it down to minimum now because we don't want it to bubble too lively now. I have five eggs. I think that will fit the pot, don't you think? Yes, you don't want to We were thinking about six, but then, you know. Too much. Nah. So we create a little well here, and then we have the eggs in ramekins, and we go right in there, and we create another one. Nice. So basically what we're doing here, we are poaching the eggs in tomato sauce. And there. This is going to be so pretty. I hope you put them beautifully there. <laughs> I'm arranging them as good as I can. One in the middle here. Yes, that's perfect. We want to cover this up so we catch the steam on top of the eggs. So we poach them now. This will take probably five to six minutes, but definitely we will have a look after five because we want the yolks to be runny. Let's see how we're doing here. And they are perfect. And let me show you. Now let's kill the heat first. There we go. They have cooked to perfection and they are just shy of being ready. And that's why you want to stop them because they will continue to cook a little bit in the, in the sauce. So now off the heat. And then we're going to dress them up nicely with a little bit of uh, parsley. So not too much, but we want some green in here. I have to do it nicely, otherwise my wife, she gets angry for her thumbnail. <laughs> ah, aesthetics, baby. Aesthetics, true. And then some crumbled feta. I'm not sure that's traditional, but... It cannot be traditional in Northern Africa, but that recipe exists, I think, in many places. And of course... But anyway, crumbled you know, feta goes really well on top yeah, of this. Yeah, we make so. many variations of uh, tomato no. with uh, eggs and we do add feta. We have a couple of Cret of Cretan those. ones, I think we've tried. Yeah, from many regions in Greece and I think uh, it matches nice with this uh, combination of tomato and eggs. So maybe some others have taken that idea, you know. Well, if that isn't pretty, I don't know what is. So now it's just a matter of tasting and that needs crusty bread. And here we have our nice 
Pan de Cristal. <laughs> ah, listen to that. Such, so beautiful. And look at the structure inside this. It's like magnificent. Obviously, there's a link down below how to make that. We've made them in a couple of videos in, in different variations. Yeah, but the second start of today's show. <laughs> exactly. But this dish deserves definitely some crusty bread. So we are going to take one of the eggs, crack the yolk here, get some egg yolk on our bread, take some sauce on the bread, and that is a bite to die for. That is just fantastic. It is a little bit spicy. I could have taken it a little bit more spicy for my own taste, but that's up to you. You can dial it up and down like you want. But trust me, you can serve this for breakfast, for brunch, for lunch, for dinner, as we said. It's a magnificent recipe and it's actually super easy to make.